It has been 30 years since my grandfather died, and to this day I have tied my fond memories of my NES to this horrible two years that I watched a very strong man slowly wither away from cancer. He would have been 97 years old if he were alive today. When people were selling their NES consoles to buy their Genesis's and Super Nintendo systems, I kept mine, largely in the same condition. I could modify or mod the system to handle HDMI naturally, but this console is special. It is a memento of a time that my life changed dramatically. My family has always been very tight-knit, as I am with my children. And my grandfather's dying wish was that his only daughter, my mother, move in with my grandmother, which we did. In and another ironic twist, my grandmother was my first gaming buddy I ever had. She and my grandfather had their own Intellivision console, and we often played Shark Shark and Burger Time together. She showed me tips and tricks in the games at a young age, things that I would use later in life on my other games. It was in my junior year of high school when my grandmother had her first stroke. I still had my NES out along with the Genesis and Super Nintendo. I tried to play Burger Time with her, but she was no longer capable. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2007. Fortunately, she did get to meet my fiancé at the time, who is now my wife. She even quipped, she's better than the first one. I was engaged once before. Had she been alive today, she'd be 101 years old. Here's the NES, just as it was 30 years ago. I removed the Nintendo Power stickers that I foolishly placed on the console as a small child and cleaned the cartridge contact so it would work again properly. This console will never be modified, as I see it as a testament to my grandparents and ultimately parents who sacrificed so much for me as a child. What can show appreciation for a gift more than keeping it in great condition for 30 years, a wife and two kids later? Welcome to the Generational Gamer. I had no intention of doing any videos until really the Super 64 comes. My dad's due to come out of the hospital this week. He's been there for about three months now. He had a pretty bad fall. Um, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you'll know that the NES is my favorite console. I will never get rid of my NES. I plan to do a video talking about my special NES. Growing up, my parents didn't have a whole lot of money. My father worked two jobs, and my mom stayed home with us. This was my first console. And since we didn't have a whole lot of money, when I wanted a Nintendo, my parents always said no. You know, you've got an Intellivision. What do you need a Nintendo for? 31 years ago, today, today is July 27th, 2019, my grandfather died. Mom, Dad, can you identify this item? Your first Nintendo, I think. You yeah. think? Well, it has a VCR thing and everything, with the two little buttons. And, uh, yeah, let's see. It was dated 1985. Long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Thirty-four years. Still have it. Still in good condition. Do you remember the circumstances of me acquiring this awesome system? I believe we told you that you weren't going to get it. It was very expensive. We were not going to get it for you. And then your grandfather passed away, and you were having a hard time dealing with that. So we went ahead and we got it. Yep. Now, I say my grandparents, my grandmother was actually my first gaming buddy. She and I used to play Burger Time on the Intellivision. And Shark Shark. Yes. Shark Shark. And, and Shark Shark. And Astro Smash. I don't think she really played that too much. Yeah, well. she, she did. She got up the tanks. She got up the tanks? Yeah, had tanks going across the screen. I don't remember that. She used to play three, four hours a night. So my grandmother played... <laughs> In television while she was doing laundry and then what else did she do do with it yeah it was when she was doing laundry and when you came over the house that's right she taught me more tips in burger time than i learned from anywhere else remember there was no internet back then and my grandfather's death was very transformative to my life now anybody who knows me personally knows i have ocd i'm also I, very specific in what i like and what i don't like and there's really no variance there uh, think Sheldon Cooper on Big Bang Theory, but not quite as nerdy. Anyway, I was inconsolable when my grandfather died. And we were close. I saw him every single day. 
and his dying wish was that his only child, my mother, move in with my grandmother and take care of the family. Well, we were close, we saw him every day, and that's what we did. So, uh, changed life. And when it came time for the birthday again, this was right after my grandfather passed, who was only 66 years old, he had cancer of an unknown origin. And he only retired a couple years prior. Um, in fact, he had prostate cancer twice before, and then like two years before he died, he had to have open heart surgery. It was pretty new back then. And I will never forget seeing him cut, seeing his scars from sternum all the way down to almost his navel and then from his leg because they had to move arteries around. It was really a, a long recovery. And then once he recovered, he got diagnosed with cancer. So he didn't live beyond a couple years. And I saw a fairly large guy. I mean, he was muscular. He used to move furniture. That was his business. And uh, I remember he also got me a bike the year before he died. He, I, I fell off of it, I was getting upset, you know, the whole thing, but he wanted to see me enjoy it before he passed. He knew his time was limited, so he wanted me to get it at that time. One of the things I will never forget, he got on my bicycle, because it was a fairly large bike, he wanted to get me something I could grow into, so it was 24 inches in size, so it was definitely too big for me at my age. But he climbed on the bike, and he was so weak, he fell off of it. And he fell on his back, and his head bumped and bounced off the street. And then my father came outside and helped bring him back in. And then he rested because he was so tired. I was so young, I don't remember specifics about the dates, but I do know the following year, I'm almost certain it was the following year, that when he, that's when he passed, and that's when I got my original NES. I love that thing. I spent so much of my time playing that, just to pass my time and get my worries out and everything. This is not the original box. The original box was thrown away, and this system I thought was worth having an original box for, so I bought one. I bought a box. I bought a cardboard box for this console. Now, I don't use it anymore. It works fine. I ended up putting it away and I got a retro USB AVS. Because I was never going to mod my NES, it's got so many fond childhood memories, I decided I was going to get one of these. About what's the need for the clutter of video games? And you know what? You're probably right. This is just some of the current stuff that I'm playing. And then I've got my old ones, and this isn't even all of it. This is just what I play most. And I can't keep up with it. I have a full-time job. I have kids. I see my father almost every day in the hospital. But um, I get it. These things are big. I'm glad, my, I'm glad my wife tolerates it. I buy a lot of them. I don't even have space for them all. My, my basement, which is where I have all this stuff, is a complete mess. I'm trying to clean it up, but, you know, have out what you use or what you think is a good display item and put the rest of it away. As far as convenience, oops, retro games, modern equipment. So, I guess, you know what, I'm going to show you everything I have right now. But this thing... It's a little discolored. When I was young and stupid, I put stickers on it. Nintendo Power stickers. And those are the clean parts on the top. It's uh, faded a little bit. It's yellowed a little bit. It's not terrible. It's not like a Super Nintendo where it looks like somebody peed on it. It's actually in really good condition. And it works perfectly. But it doesn't work on a modern TV. <laughs> not well, at least. It's still composite. Even throwing in a retro tank, it still looks like crap because... RetroTink needs something better than the composite. But I hold so much nostalgic and fond memories to this thing that, one, I'll never get rid of it. I showed it to my son. He loves it. He thinks cartridges are the coolest thing in the world. He puts them in. He takes them out. You know, I mean, they're adorable. They were great for kids. But 
modern games. Yeah, I mean, I have uh, most of the classics I like on this. I have them on other consoles. I'll pay for the convenience to have them digitally, particularly on the Switch. I love Switch Online. I mean, it's got issues. I did it. And uh, the library kind of sucks. It would be really nice if you could remap your buttons, but I digress. There's options. Very fond memories, and I wouldn't trade them. And I promise to give these to my son one day. He'll take care of them and keep them in good condition. I may actually have to buy a protector for this box because it does hold so many fond memories of people who are gone. My grandmother's long gone too. She died in 2007. And now my parents are at the age where they're at the top of the generational level and I'm in the middle and now I've got young kids. And with all this stuff going on with my dad, I keep thinking, I can't believe they're at that age. I'm at this age. And my kids are getting older. And my mom said to me, she said, I, we were in Atlantic City one at one time when you were a lot younger. They don't go anymore, but they uh, they saw the young couples on one side, they were in the middle, and they saw the old couples on the other. And they knew they were there, they're in the middle now, and they know at one point they're going to get to the other side. And they're there now. And it's sad. I'm very close with my parents, as I was with my grandparents. We live no more than 10 minutes with heavy traffic away from each other. I talk to them almost daily. Lately we've been seeing each other daily because I'll leave work, go to see my dad, then come home. If I'm doing a video, I'll work on the video, I'll take my laptop to the kitchen, I'll sit there while we're eating dinner, edit that, and then upload it as quickly as I can. And then move on, go go up, get go to sleep, get up the next day at four in the morning to go to work, and then do the whole thing over again. But I like it. It's helped me keep my mind off my dad lately. It gives me something to keep me focused, whether I'm on Twitter or Facebook or any of these social media platforms, talking about generational gamer, talking to people. Just met somebody really nice from the area who started following me, and uh, ironically, Regen, the place that I did a interview with uh, last year, they knew him and they pointed him to my channel, and we met today at the store and we are talking for a while. It was pretty cool. Nice guy in the area. He's gonna help out the channel a little bit going forward. But I see the retro stuff. I see it as my link to the past. Quite frankly, I don't care about many of the new series. I like the retro games. Yeah, I look at these things as my link to some of the greatest times coming out of adversity, and I hold very fond memories, so I'll never get rid of this stuff. Yeah, I've sold some games that I probably shouldn't have, but it reminds me of the people that are attached to these things. I know how hard my parents work to be able to afford something like this for me. I know how... I'll never... It'll always be tied to my grandfather. So... The Nintendo... I mean, I wanted one so much when I was a kid. And then when I finally got it, it was, it was wonderful. And it was a wonderful diversion from what had happened just a month prior. I'm starting to ramble now. I'm going to show you my collection and then I'm going to say goodbye. And thank you for the support. Thank you for watching. Have a good evening.